Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here, TGIF ladies and gentlemen, happy Friday. A quick reminder that we are not going to be having a live stream today, but we will have one this Sunday at 9 a.m. Alaska time, 1 p.m. Eastern time, so hope to see you there. Before I start with the video ladies and gentlemen, and I do have a lot of news for you, I wanted to express to you what type of news I try to bring you and why. So. Let me go ahead and start off by showing you a list of Intel, I guess you can call it, that I received in my email, my Intel email. Now, if you have any Intel, I do have two emails in the description of every one of my videos. One of them says Intel on it. That's the one that you want to send Intel to. Any questions or things like that, you can send to the other video, to the other email, not video. All right, so for example, check this out. This is about 10% of what I've received here in the last day or two. And it's Intel about forest fires as a military weapon, right? Uh, Executive Order 14067, which is ensuring responsibility development of digital assets, which has to do, I'm pretty sure, with CBDC and the federal government trying to centralize a CBDC, a centrally banked digital currency, and trying to get rid of the uncentralized cryptos that are out there like Bitcoin and such. Uh, another one is Senator Lisa Murkowski, which is a senator that represents or supposedly represents Alaska and how she will stay in power or in the U.S. Senate using methods that maybe are not good, right? That's where we'll leave it at wildfires being used as a weapon okay so forest fires, same thing so i got two of those insider information about how natural gas prices will continue to rise above highs a flour mill burned another plant that makes food burns this one here russian officials say that venezuela has not yet approached russia about joining the BRICS, but which are uh, the BRICS? for those of you who don't know is brazil russia india china and south africa those are the BRICS nations and added that algeria egypt and this is the big one here saudi arabia are the latest countries to express interest in joining argentina and iran have already applied china sees the BRICS alliance and a as a constellation of emerging markets as part of their strategy to supplant u.s dominance and displace the dollar as the world's sole reserve currency and expanding BRICS offers an opportunity for countries outside the American orbit to gain similar benefits provided by the United States, especially foreign direct investment and military protection. The BRICS alliance will likely grow to challenge the West for global economic dominance. That's another piece of intel that I got. I'm getting to something here, right? So please bear with me. Inflation numbers and how they are deceiving. Federal Reserve rewriting the law and creating a permanent $500 billion bailout facility for Wall Street. Tyson Foods president of Fresh Meat warned that beef prices are likely heading higher in 2023 and 2024. We've talked about this before, that right now we have a glut of beef in the market because of all of the culling that's been going on because ranchers and farmers cannot afford to feed and or water their cattle. So they're having to put them to market. There's a glut in the market, but that next year and the years to follow, they're gonna have to try to play catch up in, in regaining their inventory. Uh, which is going to make beef prices go up even more. They also said on the call that production is falling due to supply constraints and the labor shortage. After noting shrinking margins, Tyson announced another retail price increase for chicken. Meanwhile, USDA reported that crop conditions for corn and wheat again deteriorated. Right? And the last one here, cockroach milk has been talked about for years now. So why am I talking about this? This is about 10%, maybe 20% of all of the intel that I've gotten in the last couple of days. The news that I like to, to report to you, the news that I like to bring out to the open to you, because there's so many. I bet you that a lot of you probably didn't know a lot of this stuff right here that I just sounded off. I know I didn't. The news that I try to report to you are things that we can do something about. Like, for example, forest fires as a military weapon. Ask yourself, what can you do about that? There's not too much that we can do about that. If that is happening on a personal basis, there's not too much that we can do about that. And as I've stated previously, I don't think that as a people, 
we are not going to come together to the point where we can actually affect policy. Meaning that we the people have been so divided and we are so divided that we can't even have a conversation, right? From one side or the other, we cannot have any conversation to come together to acknowledge who the real enemy is, right? So this thing about the executive order 14067, what can we do about that? There's not much we can do about that. They've been working on a cryptocurrency here for the last, what, seven to eight years with MIT? You know, the government has. Uh, what can we do about Senator Lisa Murkowski? Ladies and gentlemen, you know that most politicians, in my opinion, are selected, right? So if she's going to stay in office, she's going to stay in office, right? And probably no one's going to challenge her. Let's see. Insider information about how natural gas prices will continue to rise above highs. This is the kind of story that I like to bring to you. Why? Because this is something that we can do something about now. We can prepare for higher gas prices now. And this person sent me an email. She is the wife of a person who's been in the natural gas industry for over 30 years. And he's one of the higher ups. And you know, husbands and wives, they talk. They talk about work and all that kind of stuff. So she gets this information from him. And he says that get ready for natural prices, natural gas prices to not only reach their previous highs, but to go beyond those previous highs. So start to prepare now with the things that you know you're going to need later on in the year and into next year that way when your gas prices come in higher than expected you can divert some of the funds that you saved by buying your stuff at today's prices and divert those funds towards your energy bills this winter and it will at least at least allow you to breathe a little knowing that you have food that you have all of those things that you need in order to counter the rise in energy prices. Those are the kind of stories that I like to bring forward because it's something that we can see coming ahead and we can do something about it now. This thing about Russia and the BRICS nations, that's something that we need to know about as well. And why is that? Because ladies and gentlemen, it seems that in the world there is a shift away from the US Federal Reserve note. I hate calling it the dollar, but that's what most people know it as. There is a shift away from the dollar. And more countries that come on board to the BRICS system, the more countries that are going to be leaving the dollar, that are not going to be using at least as many dollars as they are now. The less dollars that country needs in order to do trading internationally via the SWIFT system, then the less reserves that they have to keep in their central banks. And what does that mean? That means that they now don't have as many dollars in reserves holding dollars. Where are the excess dollars going to go? They're going to go to the only country that has to accept those dollars. And what country is that? These United States of America. How will that affect us? It will put an influx of dollars into the economy. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is inflationary. It will make everything that you have to buy cost more of your dollars, meaning that your dollars will become worth less in the long run. So these things we have to know about. Inflation numbers and how they are deceiving. This we have to know about. Why? Because the trend is your friend, like Johnny Bravo says. And if we notice that there is a trend where inflation continues to rise, we have to understand that so that it will enable us to prepare for the future. I'm going to go over a, a very short chart showing you how the inflation numbers that were being touted by government is nothing but nonsense. Everything is going up except for a few minor things. Everything is going up and it is affecting your standard of living. The Federal Reserve is rewriting the law and creating a permanent $500 bailout facility for Wall Street. What can we do about that? Not much we can do about that. I mean, look at everything that the Federal Reserve has gotten away with for the last hundred plus years and look at all of the banks under its umbrella that it protects, that the government protects. This is my opinion. JP Morgan just went to court. The court found several of their traders uh, liable or not liable, but guilty of felony, felony crimes. But no one in JP Morgan is going to jail. Why? Because they are under the umbrella of protection of the Federal Reserve and the government. They're going to continue to do this. But what do we do? What do we do to stop this? There's nothing we can do to stop this, ladies and gentlemen. Have we been able to stop it for the last hundred and something years? No, like I've been saying in the past, the system is eventually going to crash. It will eventually crash and or it will be turned into a new system that will benefit only those at the very top. So what do we do? We prepare. That's all we can do. Here, where Tyson Foods says that the price of beef is going to go up higher and that they've already seen that the price of chicken is going up higher now, 
What do we do about that? Learn how to pressure can. If you can afford to get a freeze dryer, get a freeze dryer prep so that you can put things away at today's prices. These are the kind of articles that I like to bring forward are things that we can take action on in order to preserve not only our sovereignty, but the control that we have over our lives in the future when they bring these things about in order to try to control us more. Because when you are hungry and you don't have bread, you are going to go ahead and bend to the will of that person or that institution that is offering you the bread. Now, as you can see, this is the Consumer Price Index Summary, and it was just released on the 10th of August. I'm not going to go over any of this stuff right here. I'm just going to go ahead to the meat and potatoes of it. So here, all items, of course, we came up with 8.5, right? Month, not month over month, but year over year, meaning that in the month of July, we paid 8.5% more for all items across the board, you know, accumulated across the board than we did last July, all right? That's the skinny of it. But look at this. Remember, it's the things that you really need to live that will go up in price and everything else will either stay the same or go down. There is an exception this time around, but the majority of the things that are going up a lot higher than what they're touting at 8.5% are things that we need to live. Food at home in general in that month went up 10.9% year over year, ladies and gentlemen. That means that if you take a dollar bill and you cut 10% off of it, or really 11%, you cut 11% off of it, that is how much you can get this year compared to what you could get last year during the same time. Food at home, 13%, ladies and gentlemen. Food at home, 13%. That number should scare the bejesus out of you, 13%. We are at double digits for food. And most people are staying away from restaurants because they can no longer afford it, right? Food away from home, like restaurants and things like that, 7.6%, 8%. Energy and commodities, okay, look at this. For the month of July, energy went down 7%. All right, gasoline went down 7%. Fuel oils went down, uh, what does it say here, 11%. Utility gas went down 3%. But for the entire month, for the year over year, for the month of July, 33%. So when they say that inflation was zero in July, it's because they're using numbers that makes sense to them, that makes it look good for them. But really, year over year, 32.9%, 33%. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is how they play their games. I'm going to leave the link to this site on a pinned comment. That way, you can revisit this every month. You can revisit it every month, and you can see for yourself how things are going. So let's take a look at all items less food and energy. All items less food and energy. 5.9%. Why is it not that much? Because people aren't buying a lot of consumer products. They're spending most of their money on food and energy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so this is what you have to look at. You need to do your own research. We need to become an informed population. That way, when the government says something or the Federal Reserve says something or some mainstream media pundit says something, remember, these mainstream media guys, the guys that work for the major stations, those people are millionaires. They are millionaires. They get paid to say what their bosses want them to say. Anyone that, that goes off the reservation on the mainstream media, they're no longer there. They're gone. They either change their way or they are gone for good. You'll never hear from them again. So do your own research, ladies and gentlemen. Understand what is going on. That way you can better prepare. I'm not saying that you can stop any of this personally, but you can better prepare for what's coming in the future. This is an email that I received from one of our community members. And here it goes. Hey, AP, I was just out two days ago and I was amazed at how bad the stock is getting at my local Walmart again. The first picture is the greens and vegetable. The second picture is the potatoes. And the third picture is the fresh chicken. And then he finishes off by saying, we knew that it was coming, but wow, it's really getting scary and it's going to get even worse. And look at these pictures, ladies and gentlemen. This is a real Walmart. All right, in the United States, and what have we been talking about? A potato shortage, right? 
when when we talk about these things, when I come out to you and say, hey, yeah, we're going to have a potato shortage. I read an article that seems very plausible. And then everyone's saying, at, at that time, everyone was saying, there's plenty of potatoes on the shelves and things like this, right? But but when I come out with these things, it's because those are leading indicators. It means that it's not happening right now, but we're going into that. We're going into a potato shortage. It's becoming more difficult for manufacturing plants to assess or access potatoes. And as you can see here, at least in this Walmart, it's becoming difficult for them to keep the shelves stocked of potatoes. Actually, it doesn't really look that like there's any potatoes there at all. Uh, these look like sweet potatoes up here. So all the bins are empty. Now, am I saying by looking at this and by reading that email that this is happening in every single Walmart in the United States? Absolutely not. I've stated in the past that shortages, in my opinion, are going to be localized. So for example, let's say that his Walmart right here is short of potatoes right now. They don't have any potatoes. Uh, but a Walmart, the next state over, has potatoes. Well, next month, this Walmart may have potatoes again, but that Walmart may not. See what I mean, ladies and gentlemen? They just go ahead and shift the supplies around to where they need it in order for people to say, oh, wait a minute, oh, but we have potatoes now. Oh, but last time we ran out of potatoes for two or three weeks, uh, but we have them now for a week. And, and the price is a little higher, but I'm glad that we have them. That is how they condition us to accept what they want us to accept. Prepper channels have been talking about this for years, and people often say, oh, a broken clock is right twice a day. I think that's what they say, right? Uh, but it's not that. It's that we've been seeing, we, we actually, you know, this is how boring my life is. I actually spend my time looking through news and searching for things that may be coming about in the future that I can warn you all about. And, and that I myself can use to prepare for myself and tell my friends and families about, right? This is what we look for. We look for things that are leading indicators, right? That, that may propose that in the future, you may have to prepare for this if you want to continue to live that same standard of living that you've been living in the past. Here in Germany, the Rhine water falls to critical levels as Germany faces yet another shock, another leading indicator. Do you think that this is going to enable the price of things to go up or down? The water level on the Rhine River at Kaub, Germany has fallen to a critical 40 centimeters, which is 15.7 inches. It becomes uneconomical for barges to transit Europe's most important inland waterway at this level. So they are not going to be transferring consumer products and probably food, whatever they transfer through there, because they cannot do it. You know, they'll take a chance of grounding in, in that river, and that's going to be a lot more expensive than any profits that they would have made should they take that chance. It says that about 160 million tons of goods and commodities are hauled along the Rhine River in 2020. Uh, it says that ranging from chemicals to iron ore to oil products, low water levels restrict the transport of goods along the waterway by limiting how much barges can carry without scraping against the riverbed. So this is something that I feel that it will affect everyone in that region. Police in Portland, Oregon, suburb of Beaverton, have arrested a man, they say, led a catalytic converter trafficking ring that moved more than 44,000 of the stolen devices since the beginning of 2021. It is big business. I talked to one of our community members, all right, here a few months ago, and he said he lives in New York, and he said that his catalytic converter has been stolen, I believe, twice from his vehicle. The second time that it was stolen, he called the cops, and they said that, and he called in the morning. And the cops told them that that was the 13th call they received that day. Either the 13th or 16th call they received that day early in the morning on stolen catalytic converters. UK to reverse accidental ban on edible insect farming. This is what's coming down the line. They've been working on this for years. And check this out. Tell me they haven't been working on this for years. This is an article that I pulled up that was from 2016, right? 2016, drink up. Cockroach milk is the protein drink you didn't know you've been missing. So they've been working on this for years, ladies and gentlemen. And what do we do about this? We prepare. That way, when they put their bug burgers on the shelves, nobody buys it. Be prepared so that you don't have to result to eating this stuff if you don't want to. Listen, if you like bugs, eat bugs. Live and let live. 
You eating bugs is not going to hurt me one bit. But don't try to legislate me into having to eat bugs because you want everyone to eat bugs. If you like bugs, please eat bugs. There's plenty of locusts. There's a whole bunch of locusts around in the U.S. that's decimating crops. I mean, I wish we had a whole bunch of bug eaters. I mean, what I say is just go ahead and put a whole bunch of chickens out there and they'll take care of the locusts. But I digress. Here it says, good news, guys. UK companies will soon be free to start producing and selling several species of edible insects again. Great news. Another sign of the time, Google searches for firewood in Germany have exploded. You read that right. The largest European bank predicted that a growing number of German households will be using firewood for heating, maybe allowing a petulant Scandinavian teenager to set the country's energy policy was not the brightest idea after all. Uh, I didn't even read that before. I wouldn't have even included that in there because that's just opinion. Uh, but this is a sign of the times. Whatever happened to wood fire, uh, to burning wood, you know, for heat not being good for the environment, well, what happens is, is that when these crazy policies that they set fail, then they turn back to things that were even worse than what they had in the beginning. And for Germany, this is worse, right? Because not that many people in the past used to heat with wood. So how many house fires do you think there's going to be? How many injuries do you think there's going to be with people that are not experienced with stoking a fire, with lighting a wood fire, with watching it, making sure that it's burning right? All right, ladies and gentlemen? These are all leading indicators as to what we're going to be seeing in the future. Another one that's running out of water. Nothing left in the pipes. French towns rely on water truck deliveries for survival. So now they're relying on water truck deliveries for survival. I wonder if those French towns, if the people there are allowed to collect their own rainwater, even if they're getting any rain at all. I don't know if they are or not. But this is another thing that we can look at to prepare. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare. That water that's coming in, that's being delivered by truck, what's in it? Is it good water? Can you drink it? Well, whether they tell you yes or no, whether the authority says, yes, this is good water, it's potable, you can drink it. Are you just going to take them at your word? Do you have any water filters? Maybe you should have some water filters. In case something like this happens near you, you can go ahead and at least filter the water and feel safe that your family is consuming something that is not going to hurt them. Another leading indicator, China and Saudi Arabia intensify energy cooperation with critical deal. So China and Saudi Arabia are now doing bilateral deals amongst each other. Saudi Arabia, in my opinion, is lost to the United States. Right? We've had a deal for 50 plus years where the United States provided security and arms to Saudi Arabia. We are still providing them with arms for nothing. We're getting nothing in return. The president's been over there asking for them to increase the volume of oil production uh, for the OPEC nations so that it can bring the price of oil down. And they really haven't budged. All right. The reason that the price of oil and gasoline has come down this summer is because people are not driving as much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's not because times are good. It's because people are not driving as much. They're spending most of their money on food, all right, renting things that they need to live and they're buying just what they need in order to get back and forth to work and not going anywhere and not really taking any vacations. And to finish it off, Hurricane is stoking La Nina to persist throughout peak season. So what's this saying? It's saying that hurricane season in the East Coast is going to probably last a few more months than normal. So ladies and gentlemen, prepare. Get the things that you need prep it up. If you know that this is going to come, prep it up. Every single family in the United States of America should have a backup generator with at least a good five to 10 gallons of gasoline put away. Not so that you can run your generator straight through the entire power outage so that maybe you can run it for four or five hours a day so that you can get your freezers frozen up again, so that you can get your refrigerators cool again, so that your food won't get spoiled, and so that you can either get heat or cool depending on where you live in the United States and what you need. Every home ought to have one, at least a small one. As peak hurricane season is underway, the odds of La Nina sticking around for at least a few months are rising, potentially leading to more hurricanes and tropical storm. Just get prepared, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of news today, huh? Uh, this video is probably a lot longer than what it should have been. Uh, I hope to be able to put out the review video on the solar generator later on today, maybe tomorrow on Saturday. It depends on when the company gets back 
back with me. I may put out another video later on th this afternoon. I did a paid a prep of some things that I think everyone needs to get because they're just not going to be available. They will not be available or at least affordable. At the very least, it will not be affordable, more than likely not available here in the future when we get cut off from China. Having said that, thank you very much. And listen, I want to say thank you so much to every one of you that joined in on our live stream yesterday. It was an awful lot of fun. All right. So thank you so much for every one of you that joined in. Thank you very much to Nutrient Survival and Becky from Nutrient Survival for coming on and uh, doing those three bundle giveaways of Nutrient Survival products. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Becky and Nutrient Survival. And uh, I hope that you have a great rest of your Friday. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one to each one and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place. And you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. I'm Alaska Prepper. I am out.